Well, a judge in New York recently ruled in favor of legal protections for polyamorous relationships. In her ruling on a case involving an apartment eviction, the judge said the definition of family is changing and it is possible for a child to have more than two legal parents. Meantime, in several cities in Massachusetts, polyamorous relationships have been given legal protection. Father Thomas Petrie, president of the Dominican House of Studies in Washington, D.C., joins us now. Father, great to see you. It's always good to be with you, Tracy. Okay, I guess there's a lot to unpack here. Um, so I want to start off with this. Probably a lot of our viewers are watching right now, don't even know what this is. Um, what's at the root of these relationships? Well, these are relationships that have more than two people in it, and we shouldn't be surprised that there are people seeking civil and legal recognition of relationships that have more than two persons. Look, as Catholics, we know that what marriage has always been about is having children and raising children. Now, unfortunately, a lot of state governments, a lot of governments, a lot of people don't seem to know that anymore. But when marriage is about children, marriage needs a man and a woman to have a child and a mother and a father to raise the child. Once in the early 1970s you begin ha having states that no longer defend marriage, no longer make it easy to get out of marriages, uh, once you have Obergefell legalizing gay marriage, certainly for most people now marriage is nothing more than a public solemn profession of love. If that's the case, why does it have to be a man and a woman? Why does it have to be only two people? And so people People are taking this to the logical next conclusion, which is unfortunate because it's to the detriment of children, it's to the detriment of families, it's to the detriment of our country. Yeah, and let's talk a little bit more about that, especially for the faithful. How concerning is this? Oh, it's, it's very concerning because the family is the core cell of society and the church. And we believe and we know, and it's not just a belief, there are studies that show this, that children are best raised by the man and woman who are married, who produced them in a loving union and are, are, are committed to them, to raising them. And those secure the best outcomes for our children. And so when we have as a policy or as a cultural movement, not only that marriage is something that's no longer just me a man and a woman, but also increasingly in some people's mind, not even just two people, it loses its whole meaning of what even marriage and family is. It's just whatever you want it to be. And the judge in New York said, that the definition of family is changing. Yeah, and, and that's the thing I want to read. This was a headline, uh, and this was coming from Fox News NYC judge rules on polyamorous relationships. Perhaps time has arrived. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about that and, and that ruling and the precedent that it sets. Well, it's an unfortunate precedent, and it'd be interesting to see how that would, you know, if, if a test case like this were to rise to the Supreme Court. Um, because historically, we've always understood the state had an interest in protecting the marriage of men and women for the sake of children, that children would be better citizens of the state, of the country, of society, if they were raised by a mother and a father. We know as Catholics that not only is the family the central unit, we also know that attacking the family attacks the very dignity of the human person. Yeah. Wh where do you see this all going? Well, it's all going to it's all going into absurdity. I mean, as uh, you know, you look at the history of the church in society. Pope Benedict the 16th in 1968 when he was just Joseph Ratzinger said that there are these moments in history when society separates from God, separates from the church. We've seen it before and it just goes over the cliff into absurdity. Unfortunately, that often entails a lot of suffering and struggle because the further away from God you get, the further away way you get from who we are as human persons, because we're made for God. And that entails uh, denial of the human nature, and it entails suffering. Human experience ultimately will dictate and reinforce the truth. Yeah, and I feel like um, that the most vulnerable really is being hurt the most of all, and that is the children. I want to pick up on that before I let you go. Something else I want to touch on, a report speaking of the children by The Spectator just came out recently, um, and they're reporting that Georgetown University's medical school, uh, that they're teaching med students uh, to treat transgender or gender dysphoric children with puberty blockers, um, hormone therapy as well. I'd like for you to talk a little bit about that, what the church teaches about that, and, and then also what it says 
um, that a Catholic institution is sort of implementing these for, for future doctors? Well, it's unconscionable that any medical school would be teaching this. Uh, this is, I'm going to use the phrase, it's a snake oil. Mm -hmm. uh, there are people who really have an illness that are uncomfortable in their bodies. Puberty blockers, hormone therapy, they have been untested in this way. Even the FDA does not approve using this kind of medicine for these purposes. It's a snake oil that some med med doctors are, are pushing. As Catholics, of course, we believe that the body is not incidental. It is not an accident. It's part and parcel of who we are. And if there is a sort of disjunction between who we think we are in our bodies, that is a spiritual, emotional, psychological issue that the body and modifying the body will not help. Yeah, and, and doctors, as they say, when they take that oath, do no harm. Exactly, exactly. We're running out of time, but I'm wondering if you have any advice uh, for us when it, regarding these subjects. Well, you know, to keep your children close, uh, to always maintain, you know, uh, uh, your values and to teach our children our values, but also to pray for, for our society. It will go into absurdity. One wonders how further absurd it can be when you have doctors uh, suggesting hormone treatments and body-altering surgeries for children, um, how much more absurd can it get than that? One will hope that in time God's uh, grace will shine upon society and culture and bring about a vast conversion of mind and heart. What can we do? Well, what we can do is obviously, other than pray, but obviously uh, support uh, policies and support uh, institutions that are speaking the truth and are actually providing legitimate care to those who have real psychological and medical needs. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. We always appreciate it. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you. God bless you.